Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series, a set of short talks about life in the universe in the middle of this pandemic. And today I want to address a quite contentious question, rather long-windedly written here, which is why do we spend money on space exploration when we've got lots of problems here on the Earth? As I say, this is a controversial question. Uh, I'm not going to profess to sit here and give you a straightforward answer, but I want to give you some perspectives on what I think the answer to this question is. Why are we spending money on space exploration when we've got problems here on the Earth? Well, the first thing to notice is that space exploration and environmentalism, in my view, are one and the same thing. Environmentalists are concerned with keeping the life support system on our planet alive and well, the thing we call the biosphere. And in fact, it was environmentalists in the 1970s who described our planet as spaceship Earth. This was not a bunch of geeky space explorers thinking about the Earth as a spaceship because they were dreaming about going somewhere else. It was environmentalists who described our planet as being like a spaceship with its atmosphere and its giant life support system, the biosphere. And environmentalists are concerned quite rightly with keeping our spaceship Earth alive and well. Space explorers do exactly the same thing. They build life support systems on the International Space Station. They have ambitions to do similar things on the Moon and Mars. They are interested in building human settlements beyond the Earth using life support systems. So in some sense, you can see environmentalists and space explorers as one and the same type of people. They're both concerned with creating a sustainable human presence in the cosmos. It's just that environmentalists deal with a rather more complex, uh, roughly three and a half billion year old life support system on the Earth with all of its idiosyncrasies and mysteries. And space explorers have a slightly simpler task to build a life support system on the space station. But basically, uh, the two groups of people are trying to successfully establish or maintain humans in the cosmos. So we could just argue that there's no real argument here at all. In fact, both groups of people are, are pushing towards the same end. But leaving that aside for a moment, uh, what might be the benefits of exploring space if we were to regard these two things as separate? Well, the first thing it's worth noting is that the exploration of planets like Mars and the icy moons of our solar system is a tiny part of the overall effort of space exploration. In fact, the vast majority of space exploration effort goes into building satellites to observe, for example, the Earth. And many satellites are used for observing um, the environment of the Earth, monitoring the health of the oceans, looking at the ocean temperatures, looking at wave heights in the oceans, looking at chlorophyll in the oceans. On land, satellites are routinely used to map agriculture, to map fires, to look at the extent of deforestation, and to try and come up with uh, policies and methods to improve the environment of the Earth. The ozone hole, for example, is regularly monitored using satellites in space. So a huge number of satellites and Earth observation systems are used to understand the environment of our planet. And before the space age, all of those measurements had to be taken on land with the laborious uh, effort of having to move across land or across the oceans, as the case may be, to take measurements. Satellites allow us to map the totality of the Earth and at different altitudes to the atmosphere in exquisite detail. So space exploration has brought us enormous benefits for understanding our environment, and we shouldn't really get distracted with traveling out to other planets, however fascinating that might be. But leaving aside the Earth and all the benefits we've got from space exploration, which I should also say, as well as monitoring the Earth, of course, satellites are used to make possible uh, telecommunications, television, mobile phones, and all the things that we use in our great globalized interconnected society that allows us to understand um, our own impact on the environment and to act on it. But if we think about other planets, um, we should also remember that the Earth is not isolated. It is part of a system. It's in space. So that's also worth noting that the Earth is part of the space environment. We shouldn't think about the environment and space. Uh, the Earth is within space. And we can learn a lot by studying other planets in our solar system. For example, the greenhouse effect uh, was first observed on Venus, on another planetary body. We were able to look at the high concentrations of carbon dioxide on that planet and to see how carbon dioxide warms a planet. Of course, Venus is a very extreme world. We don't expect, even with uh, the worst excesses of human activity, for our planet to drop into a runaway greenhouse effect like Venus. But nevertheless, by studying other planets, we learn about our home world. It's a bit like when you go to a foreign country, you get a new perspective on your home. 
that you didn't have before. It gives you a new set of ideas. And you come back to your home country with a refreshed idea about your culture and about the world or the nation in which you live in. Uh, so too, if we go to other planets and we observe them, we get fresh perspectives about our own planet. How has it evolved over time? Uh, how does it compare to other planets? And what can other planets tell us about the history of our planet and what might happen to it in the future? So those are just some examples of the great benefits uh, of space exploration to the Earth. Of course, one could go into the far future and talk about asteroid mining and collecting resources and energy in space. Um, if you can go out into space and build solar uh, satellites, for example, you collect solar power and beam it down to the Earth. These things are a little bit for, further forward into the future. But nevertheless, there is the great promise that uh, we might be able to get access to great quantities of energy and resources in space to support our civilization. Just remember that we are living on a tiny speck of rock in a vast universe. So although there are environmental problems on the Earth and resource limitations, of course, there are a vast number of resources in space. I don't think there's any doubt that this is the best planet we have. Um, I've given another talk that you can see elsewhere in this Life in the Universe pandemic series about the extremes of Mars and how that might not be such a nice place to live after all. So there's no doubt that the Earth is the best planet we have, but we shouldn't turn uh, a blind eye to the huge resources and opportunities that exist out in space that might benefit us here on the Earth. So the exploration of space has great potential for the future, as well as the enormous benefits we get from it, even in the present day in environmental monitoring. But space exploration doesn't just um, benefit the environment. The environment also benefits space exploration. And this is where we begin to see uh, a collaboration between environmentalists and space explorers that works both ways. For example, many of the extreme environments on the Earth are studied to give us better insights into the um, conditions to be found on other planets. Scientists go to the Antarctic and study the geology and biology of that extreme continent to help us understand the history of Mars and whether it could support life. Scientists go to the Atacama Desert and other dry deserts of the world to study life there to improve our prospects of looking for life on other planets. And by looking at the geology of extreme deserts or polar environments, we can expand and develop our knowledge of other planets in our solar system. That itself helps us understand the Earth and the history of our own planet. So these things are very much enmeshed. We go to extreme environments, we use the environment of the Earth to understand other planets. That understanding of other planets helps us understand our own world and its own climate, past and future. So my own view is that there's a very strong connection, scientific connection, between environmentalists and space explorers. And there are, there are very many reasons for exploring space to help understand the environment of the Earth, and there are reasons to explore the environment to help understand space. One should also realize that there are technological links between these two communities of people. Uh, technology developed in extreme environments on the Earth and in space is often the same. If we're trying to recycle water on a space station, that might be the same sort of technology that we use to recycle water in a desert. If we're trying to build better solar panels to collect solar radiation in extreme environments on the Earth to support people that live in extreme environments or even to develop better solar panels for our cities. Uh, those same solar panels may support spacecraft in space, whether that's um, satellites or human tended space stations. So a lot of technology can flow both ways between the environment uh, on the Earth, building clean technologies on the Earth can be useful in outer space. The technologies developed in space for clean living in space might be applicable on the Earth as well. And we should try and build a collaboration that allows environmentalism to be strengthened by space exploration and space exploration to gain a great deal from our growing understanding of the environment on the Earth. So in my view, uh, exploration of space and the settlement of space uh, and environmentalism, a concern for the Earth, are actually one and the same thing. I think that both communities are deeply enmeshed to the point where they can really help each other out. The Earth is the best planet we have in the solar system and probably uh, for any uh, reasonable distance around our solar system. But that's not to say that we shouldn't also uh, plan to move out beyond the Earth and establish settlements and a greater human presence and a robotic presence around the Earth and beyond the Earth that can benefit the environment. Finally, I should say that I think we should spend money on space exploration. Uh, 
simply because it's a matter of trying to understand the universe around us. The question, are we alone in the universe, is a very fundamental question about ourselves and about our civilization. And there are many other questions that have nothing to do with astrobiology, cosmology, for instance, trying to understand the origin of the universe. These are questions about our origins and about ourselves. We don't necessarily need economic reasons to spend some of our resources trying to fathom these questions, because in answering these questions, we enrich our own culture, we enrich our own understanding of where we came from, but we also develop, I think, a more nuanced and sophisticated understanding of ourselves. If we are going to save our environment and stop, stop ourselves from just being a rampaging uh, primate running across a planet using up all of our resources, one way to do that is to become a better species, to become a more enlightened species, to become a more informed species, and to become a species that is introspective about itself and understands the way in which it interacts with its planet and its future purpose in the universe that might make it um, or give it at least the motivation to look after its home world. And that is all deeply um, bound up in being a species that seeks to understand the universe and these basic questions in cosmology, astrobiology and other areas of science. So those are just some thoughts. You may agree or disagree, but I would really implore you to think about uh, space exploration and environmentalism, how they are linked, uh, how we can use both to improve our future and how we can better understand the way in which these both these human activities can come together to build uh, a civilization that can both live successfully on the Earth, but also explore and potentially settle outer space. Uh, thank you again for joining me. Look after yourselves. Bye.